Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, for The Connection, which is our time together when we study the Word of God and worship Him in song and draw a little closer to Him. I pray that uh, this evening's uh, time together will be encouraging and inspiring. Wouldn't it be great if you could just take a moment and share this with someone? Uh, maybe they don't know that we're even on, but if you click a few buttons, you can tell them right now. Say, hey, Pastor Mickey's on. He's going to be talking about Bible prophecy tonight, and you don't want to miss it. You need to tune in and check it out because it's going to be really encouraging. It's going to be really fresh, and uh, you need to hear what is being said. For I spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God of Joshua, there's a key phrase to the whole book of strategy and warfare. It's found in Joshua 1, verses 2 and 3. Moses, my servant, is dead. The old way of doing things, representative of the law, the old guard, the old generation, is dead. God speaking to Joshua. Moses is dead. It's time to stop looking to Moses. He can't provide you leadership anymore. He died. <laughs> I said he died. Therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot, Joshua, will tread upon, I've given to you, just as I promised to your mentor and your father, Moses. Notice the command from God. It is to rise up. It is to take action, not to be static, but to move forward. God is ready to fulfill his promise to give Canaan land to his people. Now, Joshua, his name, his very name is taken from the same root as Jesus' name. His name actually means Jehovah is Savior. And Joshua in this rendering is a type of Christ chosen to take God's people into their abundant inheritance. Pharaoh in the scriptures is a type of Satan. Egypt is a type of the world. The Jews are a type of the church. And so in this story, God says to, his, to Joseph he, or, or Joshua, he says, my servant Moses is dead. Moses was representative of the law. 
which could never give a sinful people total victory. Couldn't do it. Hebrews 7 and 19, for the law made nothing perfect. And a, a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. What is that better hope? It's the new covenant that Jesus brought to us. It's not the law. Thank God it is the grace that Jesus brought unto us. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Romans 8 and 2, the Holy Spirit will give you life. Everybody say life that comes from Christ Jesus and will set you free from sin and death. The law of Moses cannot do this because our selfish desires make the law weak. But God set you free when he sent his own son to be like us sinners and to be a sacrifice for our sin. Hallelujah. God used Christ's body to condemn sin. He did this so that we would do what the law commands by obeying the spirit instead of our own desires. So Jesus did not come to abolish the law and do away with the law and say the law is of no effect. He came to fulfill the law. And now when I trust in him and his work at the cross of Calvary, I am, I am allowing the fulfillment of the law to take place in me, the law that I could not keep. There's no way my own weakness made the law of none effect. My own weakness made the law uh, dead to me. But Jesus came and gave me life. And by the Spirit, I am now a child of God. And God used Christ's own body to condemn sin. And he did it so that we would do what the law commands by obeying the Spirit instead of our own desires. See, I didn't have the power to obey the, the Spirit. The law commanded it but I didn't have the power to do it until Jesus died and his resurrection life gives me the power to do it. I tell you what, I'm going to get happy in just a moment. I'm going to shout and dance. I may just run this, run, run the aisles. You see anybody run the aisles lately? Get ready. I may just run the aisles. I scared somebody. Okay. <laughs> Moses' death also speaks of separation from the past. It speaks... Uh, from a previous generation, a way of doing things in order to grasp the future. Remember I told you a moment ago, you got to let go of the past. you got to let go of it. The apostle Paul said in the book of Philippians, he said, listen, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. I press on toward the mark for the, for the, 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 the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's the prize I'm looking for. That's the calling that God's placed in my life. I have to let go of some things. John Maxwell in his leadership teaching says the law, <clears throat> pardon me, the law of sacrifice says to go up, you've got to give up. To go up, you've got to give up. Think about that. To go up, I've got to give up some things. I can't continue to do the things I used to do and expect to grow in, in areas of my life. I've got to make a sacrifice. I've got to lay some things down. I've got to give some things up. I've got to stop doing some things that I am perfectly capable of doing. Well, Pastor, you know, I just can't give that up. I just can't quit doing it. It's just part of me. It's just who I am. It's going to be in my DNA. I'm just an old sinner, an old chunk of coal. I'm going to be a diamond one day. You can, if you are a child of God. Now, this is not to unbelievers, okay? So if you're an unbeliever, turn this off. But if you're a Christian, listen to me. You can, my friend, live in a victorious realm over sin. You can conquer the flesh. You can conquer the world. You can conquer the devil. God put it in your spiritual DNA to do it. You can't help but do it. But you've got to give some things up. Preacher, are you saying I got to, it's my works that saves me? Are you saying I got to do things to be saved? No. That's not what I'm saying. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. It's by grace, through faith are you saved, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of your works. Anyone who studies the scriptures knows that. You can't work hard enough to be saved. You can't work your way into heaven. You can't work and bring salvation to your family or your, your children. You can't work hard enough to do that. You can't pay enough money. You can't, be, you can't attend enough church services. You can't be baptized enough times for any of that to happen. It's by God's grace that it happens. We 
But you can do some things of releasing your past and releasing your flesh and releasing some of those habits that are gripping you and holding you and holding you down. Stop making excuses for not growing. Boy, that went over about like I thought it would. Stop making excuses for why you're not there yet. Well, you know, nobody would help me. Reminds me of the man at the, at, at the pool of Bethesda. He was crippled all of his life. He laid like a few feet away from the water. And periodically, the water of the temple, of the water of this area, Bethesda, was a, had colonnades. It had five colonnades. And there was a pool of water. And um, it's probably a, probably a, a Jewish uh, a bathing area for the Jews. But God used it. Supernaturally, he would send an angel from time to time. Now, this is before Christ. So it's before the dispensation of grace where healing is, is for all uh, by, because of the blood and the atonement. And so periodically, an angel would come and stir the water. And when you saw the water bubbling... Ho, oh, oh, ho, it's time. And whoever get in, gets into the water first would be healed. First one in. There was a man who had been there for a long time, all of his life. And Jesus came to him and he said, he asked him a question and he said, do you want to get healed? Now what kind of question is that? Of course I want to be healed. Why would you ask me that? Because of his response. He said, well, you know, when the water starts moving, I have no man to put me in the water, excuse number one. And then he said, and when the water moves, somebody always gets there ahead of me, excuse number two. So that's why Jesus said, do you really want to get well? Or are you so comfortable with your pain that you just want to stay there? Do you just like the, the, uh, uh, the attention that you get from everybody because of your illness? Do you like to broadcast and publicize your woes and your pains and your and all this, do you like the attention that it gets you? Do you really want to get well? That was the question to him. The man sat there and he made excuse after excuse after excuse why he couldn't get well. And I know people who make excuses why they can't go anywhere, why they can't accomplish anything, why they can't conquer a habit. They, they make excuses. It's someone else's fault. But to go up, you've got to give up. So we cannot have our promised land and hold on to Moses' way of doing things. Now, let me talk a little bit about Moses, and then we're going to close this message. It's time to quit and go get a cupcake and some coffee. Y'all will save me one, right, back there? Thank you. Moses, what about Moses? Well, I like Moses. Moses was a great man, perhaps the number one personality in the Old Testament. He wrote the first five books of the Pentateuch the Torah. God gave him incredible revelation of the creation of all things. Think about the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Moses wrote that. He wasn't there in the creation, but he wrote it by revelation. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and revealed. Just like, just like in, the Old, in the New Testament, when John is writing all the things that are happening to the church in the book of Revelation, John, John wasn't there He's prophesying the future. God's giving him a revelation. So he gave Moses this revelation. Moses demonstrated great courage by starting over in life at age, age 80, by confronting Pharaoh, by leading over 3 million people out of bondage. He climbed up Mount Sinai where he met with God and received the Ten Commandments. From divine directives, Moses established the priesthood, sacrifices, and tabernacle order of worship. But one of his greatest qualities was the mercy which enabled him to intercede for God's people time and again when they would disobey. What a pastor's heart. Whew. Yet, with all that said, yet Moses never entered into the promised land because of his disobedience. God said, speak to the rock, he hit the rock. You think, well, come on, Lord, I mean, give him a break. He's a nice, look at all the things he's done. Hmm. He died on the border of his inheritance along with a generation of people who believed the evil report of the ten spies in Numbers chapter 13. In essence, God was saying to Joshua and he's saying to us, Moses is gone. He's dead. 
You cannot rely on the traditions of your past. It is a new day. You are a new breed. You are a new generation that will move on into the land. You will take the walled cities. You will, leave, you will live in their inheritance. <clears throat> Actually, the scripture says you will, um, uh, you will reap from vineyards you've not planted. You will live in cities you've not built. Hallelujah. Boy, somebody needs to get hold of this this morning. God's got something for you. I'm telling you, man, there it is. So he says, I will go with you, be strong and very courageous, defeat the giants, see the miraculous, walk into my provision. That's what God's saying to Joshua. And what he's saying to us, it's time to cross over. It's time to move out of the land of the wilderness. It's time to move out of 40 years of wandering around missing out on the provision of God, not having faith and trust in the Lord. It's time to put our trust in him. Somebody say amen. Stand with me, would you please? I'll give you one final thought. This is from Genesis 11. Genesis chapter 11 ends with these words. And they came into Haran and dwelt there, and the days of Terah were 205 years and and and. Terah died in Haran. Do I have that on the screen? Thank you. There it is. The days of Terah, 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. What does that mean? Why is that important? Well, Terah, whose name means delay, was the father of Abraham. Of course, he's the father of our faith. Somewhere along the way, when God called Abraham out of the Ur of the Chaldees and took him to a land, to a city whose maker is God, Somewhere along the way, Terah, daddy, decided he would stop in Haran, which means desert place, rather than pressing on to Canaan with the others. He wasted many years. He died in a dry place. He never saw God's fulfillment to his boy, Abraham. Never saw it. Never saw it. What kept him out? Unbelief, sin. What kept an entire generation out of the promised land? Three millions or so people. Two million, I don't know. It was sin, unbelief. But what was it that kept them out? What can we learn from from their mistakes today? I'm going to go into that next week in part two. I'm going to show you what it was that how they sinned. There are five points in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Five, uh, chapter 10, five things that Israel did, five sins that kept them out of the promised land. I'm going to show you all of those how they relate to our lives. And if we can conquer those five sins, we can find God's blessing in our lives. Sound good? Amen. One final thought. The New New Testament is in the Old Testament concealed. I had to write this one down for you so you wouldn't get lost on it. The Old Testament is in the New Testament revealed. Okay? So the New Testament is hidden, concealed in the old. You have to dig for it, but it's there. The old is revealed in the new, the new covenant, the New Testament. You see the Old Testament. There it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. It's all over, there it is. All right, that's just a little nugget. Thought I'd throw that one in there. Oh, I hope this has helped you. I hope we haven't, I hope I haven't scattered and, and, and hope, hope this has communicated what I wanted it to. Father, help us to cross over to a land that is flowing of milk and honey. Help us, Lord, to leave our dry place behind. Help us to believe our sin, our sinfulness, um, our defeat. Lord, may we take every defeat, every failure of our lives. And this morning, absolutely just put it under the blood of Jesus. Can you do that while your head is bowed and your eyes are closed? Can you, in your mind's eye, can you just visualize the cross for a moment? That's pretty easy to do, isn't it? Can you see the cross in your mind? Now I want you just to take your failures and your sins and your um, all the things that have messed with you and I want you just to put them at the foot of the cross. Just lay them there. I don't know what they look like, if they're demonic looking or if they're boxes covered in silver and gold. I don't know what they look like to you. But just in your mind's eye, you're placing, maybe it's just a lump, maybe it's just something you can't even identify. But it's just big and it's dark and it's ugly and there it is and it's your sister. It's your, it's your failures, it's your loss. Just place them at the foot of the cross because that's where Jesus wants you to leave them. Now, don't pick them up. Don't take them back with you after this service. 
When you leave today, you'll be leaving your failures. You'll be leaving your disappointments. You'll be leaving the hurt, the discouragement, the anxiety, the realm of frustration and doubt and fear, all those fears. My Lord Jesus, release that fear. Father, help my people, these people, your people today to release their fears. Fear has torment, Lord, and you said we're to cast fear out. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Oh, God, we cast fear out. We just run it out like a dog running a dog out of the kitchen. Get out. Go on, fear. Go. Fear be gone in Jesus' name. Fear be gone in Jesus' name. Fear of failure. Fear of, of, of doing something, trying something. Fear of going to school. Fear of starting a new business. Fear of applying for a promotion. Fear of starting a new job and a career. Fear of opening your heart to a new relationship. Fear that you don't raise your children right and you're, you're a lousy parent and you could do things differently. Well, we could always do things differently, but listen, don't let the enemy sit on your shoulder and tell you how lousy you are. As a parent, as a, as a husband, a spouse, a wife, don't let him do that. Don't let him do that. Father, help us, I pray, to receive your grace, receive your grace to cross over, to cross over, to cross over. Lord, I see that you've moved the waters and it's dry ground across the Jordan, from one side to the other side. We're not going to get wet. We're not going to get muddy. <laughs> you just ordained that we cross over into this land of abundance, this land of potential fulfilled, this land of dreams and potential maximized, fulfilled, place of blessing. Is there struggle there? Sure, there's struggle. As long as we're living, there's going to be struggle. But there's also victory and there's also rest for your people. Help us, I pray, to enter into that rest today. In Jesus' name. You give life. You give life. You are love. Yes. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great. 